Dekluwiti Yeti Ayahat, Atlin Kwan Ayahat, Anchorage Hachiti. My name is Maria Williams, and um, this is a, uh, I'm uh, of the Raven Moiety of the Deshitan clan. I'm a child of the killer whale, and I currently live in Anchorage. Uh, and Gunnels Chish for coming, and um, I, this, this is a, a Tlingit clan exercise. Um, and uh, I, before I, I launch into what we're going to do, it's going to be very interactive, so we're going to turn into a little Tlingit village here in a few minutes. Um, but I just want to say how I, inspired I am by the presentations I've attended so far. I'm hearing so much language. I'm hearing Tlingit, I'm hearing Haida, and uh, I'm hearing it from young people, and I see Khune, his many of his his children are now speaking, his adult children, and it's very inspiring for me. Um, I am a teacher. Um, I teach at the University of Alaska Anchorage. Uh, that's my hometown. I was born and raised there, but my dad was from Atlin. He was born and raised there. I want to acknowledge my dear cousin Doris. Uh, and she was former head of Carcross Tagish First Nations, former traditional chief. I want to acknowledge Bessie Cooley. We have interior inland lingots here, so Gunas Chish. Um, so what I did when I um, present to my students, when I try to explain the, the, the clan system or the moiety system, um, and I myself, when I studied it, you know, I heard stories from my parents and then all the anthropological diagrams that have the, the circles and the triangles and the, you know, it's like, it's, it's like a game of twister, you know, you're kind of like trying to figure out how it works. And so um, I decided to do an interactive exercise for my students. So the students I primarily teach at the University of Alaska Anchorage, I have a lot of Alaska Native students. Um, a small majority of them are from this region. Most of them are, are um, Athabascan or they're Yupik or they're Inupak. Um, they're from different regions and I have a handful of non-Alaska Native students too. And so what I do when we get to the exercise of trying to understand clan systems, and of course there's a whole variety worldwide of how clan systems operate, but in particular I like to talk about the, the Tlingit clan and, and moiety system. So what, what we're going to do, and I, I always like to use um, some little show and tell, um, but this, so you guys have seen this, it's like a traditional Tlingit clan house that with the State Museum put together. I'll pass these around if you haven't seen them, but they went on sale once and I bought like 10 of them because if you tape it together, you see the outside, it's the whale house of the Chilkat at, um, from Klekwan. And then you, in the inside, you see uh, the diagram of traditionally the, the layout of it. So I'll pass this around. And I want to say, I love the little picture of the little, the little baby that's being hung from the ceiling with the little ropes and the little blankets. And there's, there's actually a picture uh, of my sister uh, uh, I, I should show that at some point. My sister, my dad used to do that with my sister Anna when we went camping, so I'll pass these around. So, of course, traditionally, um, we know that the, the, the Tlingit lived in large clan houses, right? And we know that it's a moiety system. Um, and so usually uh, this is a, a room full of very knowledgeable people. And so this is a work in progress. And so um, I know I, I'm going to be making mistakes, and I appreciate this. I want you to be interactive as possible. Um, so don't be shy to say, well, what about this or what about that? Or maybe try this instead of that. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to turn into a Tlingit village and then we're going to um, uh, actually do some politically arranged marriages. And uh, there is a, a lot of protocol uh, traditionally, right? And sometimes the, I, my, my father actually was the product of a politically arranged marriage. So those were very common up until about probably the 30s, certainly by World War II it probably ended, um, but they were very common. Uh, and because of the delicate balance in the reciprocity system and the exchanges and things like that. Um, so what I'd like to do first is I usually explain to the students, and obviously this is a room many of you more knowledgeable than myself, um, we usually divide into the raven side and the eagle side or in the crow and the wolf side. Um, and then we talk about moieties, and uh, the moiety comes from the French word half. So the idea of the raven and the eagle is like having, uh, you know, one of two last names. You're a Smith or you're a Jones. Jones is always Mary Smith, and Smith is, Smith's always Mary Jones. Uh, but, of course, we go down to the clans, and then from the clans we go into the house groups. And so what we're going to do in a few minutes is we're, I know some of you guys know your ravens and some of you know your your eagles or your, your wolf and crow if you're inland. Um, and then what I do is I usually uh, um, have like little signs. So eagles be on one side and 
Maybe I'll put the ravens on this side and the, and the eagles on this side, since I see a few wolves over here and a few ravens over here. Um, and so we'll kind of split in half. And then um, kind of, you know, I picked real Tlingit clans. Actually, I'm Deshitan, so I, I feel like I can kind of hand out a, a few little clans in the Deshitan, um, kick Saudi. And then once we organize into um, your clans, and then we have houses. And so what I did with the houses, because I didn't want to use real houses, because I feel that's way too sensitive, and there's a lot of history behind the houses and the house groups. And so what I do, for example, at the University of Alaska, for the houses, I, just, I have students pick out a house, like the Student Union Building, the Wolf Lair's house, or the uh, ANSEP Building, Alaska Native Science and Engineering, um, or, the arts, or, or the Arts House, or the Social Sciences House. So they actually get to pick a, a, a building that they're familiar with on campus. And so for day, today, I actually picked out a couple of local ones, like the Sea Alaska Plaza House, or the Sobolov Center House, or the Juno Memorial Library House. And then on the Raven side, there's Centennial Hall, which we're obviously in a Raven house now, Governor's Mansion. Had to make that Raven, of course. State Capitol Building. And, uh, then, uh, then it, and, and then if this were actually on a UAS campus, I actually have buildings there. So, uh, and then, and then um, what each of the little uh, the houses do then is that they break into groups and they list their resources. And so let's go ahead and do that now. So everyone who knows that they're either a wolf or an eagle be on this side of the room. And all of the, the ravens, yay, over here. And if you, and, and if you, uh, if you don't have an affiliation, just pick one. <laughs> okay, you're definitely Ducklawady, so yes. that's that's you. I'm not gonna give you anything else. Okay. Kick Saudi. You got a kick it uh, no, I know, but I'm I'm using uh, not not real real I'm not using real houses. Okay. 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 Oops, Deshitan. Okay. Okay. So now we're perfectly balanced. I really like it. Okay. So now we're going to divide actually into um, into the clan. So this is the moiety, right? And now it's going to be clan. So. Uh, since we have an esteemed Ducklewady at the front, we have the Ducklewadies here. And I'm just going to make four groups because if we had a bigger group, we could get more elaborate. And then maybe Cogwantan. May maybe some of you are already Cogwantan. Yeah, Cogwantan. <laughs> okay. So we'll just create. So maybe we have a. Maybe we can do three. This is a. This is a, a nice. Let me see if I have three. I'm going to see if I have any other. No, these are my houses. Oh, so off center. No, okay, we're just going to do two. I'm so sorry. We'll have two large, two large houses or two large clans. So um, let's make Deshitan here because you no, know, you're Deshitan. And uh, how about so Kick Saudi, Kick Saudi, Raven side. We'll kind of pretend, for the most part, we'll make this group Kick Saudi. Okay. So um, now you, we roughly have an idea of the moieties, the half. We have an idea, of course, of the clans. And now, of course, houses. And so you guys can pick houses. And so I have options. Do you guys want to pick houses from a UAS campus or houses that are here in Juneau? OK, we're in Juneau. All right. So uh, we're going to make three Raven houses. And you guys can choose State Capitol Building, Governor's Mansion, Centennial Hall. So you should, we should divide this group into three. So you guys can decide. Governor's, Governor's Mansion. <laughs> <laughs> Just grab it. <laughs> okay, Centennial Hall. State well, Capitol we'll Building. Centennial Hall. Okay, and then State Capitol Building. Very powerful. Big decisions are happening there right now. Okay. Okay, and so over here, um, we have a couple of options. We have the Sobolov Center, pretty awesome. Uh, Gina Memorial Library. Oh, that's UAS. See Alaska Plaza? Sobolov Center. Okay. 
So people that want to be in the Sobolov Center house, what about Sea Alaska, Alaska Plaza, Juno Library? Plaza. Okay, and that leaves. Okay. The Cloady right here in the front. Okay. Um, so now what, I, what I'd like you guys to do is to kind of, uh, you can circle your chairs around in your house group, so you kind of create your own house, and then list your resources. And so ke keep in mind that uh, the houses historically were known for things. They were known for having access to special hunting grounds. Some of them were known to have amazing carvers. Some of them were amazing weavers. Some of them were affiliated with powerful shamans. Um, some of them uh, were known to be real strong warriors. So um, I'll give you guys 10 minutes. And in about 10 minutes, each of the houses will present uh, their list of resources, their profile. We're going to start with you guys. And so when you start, you want to first say that what your, your moiety is, what your clan is, and then what your house is. Resources, um, other than our great location, um, uh, the artists, oh, we house uh, the best artists of our community and their artwork with inside and outside of our building. Um, we have fishing and hunting and gathering as, and all that entails for um, saving the deer skin for panning and for sowing the furs for um, especially those, we have the smoke houses and the jarring, the canning, the freezing, the drying. Um, then the gathering of the berries, the Devil's Club, the Hudson Bay Tea, um, all the berries that you can think of, which I'm sure are all amazing. Um, Gathering from the beaches, so the clams, the cockles, the gumboots, the mussels, the seaweed, the black, the red, the bladder whack. Um, You're making us hungry. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, we have our traditional art. Um, we we're talking about um, gathering the cedar, using it for carving, using it for uh, basket weaving, hat weaving, um, sewing the furs, um, vests, clothing, blankets. Uh, panning, um, then there's the beading, um, did I miss anything? Oh, the hunting was the deer, seal, ptarmigan, goat, moose, geese, duck, salmon. Uh, the fishing, the herring eggs, oh my gosh, the herring eggs, you can't miss the herring eggs. <laughs> on kelp and on hemlock. Um, I think that's all we came up with very impressive list. <laughs> now we'll come over to the Raven side. <laughs> we are the Raven Deshitan Governor's Mansion House. <clears throat> and we've been here a very long time. <clears throat> we have fishers who trade with the inland Tlingit tribes of the Papu, down the Papu River. And <coughs> we have boat builders who trade with the Haida and the Simpsian. We have storytellers who are able to tell stories and trade stories with the Haida and the Simpsian and the Inland Plinket. Uh, we have our, our clan leaders are known throughout the Southeast and Inland. Uh, we have uh, weavers who are known for their ability to gather uh, goat wool for weaving. And we have carvers uh, <coughs> who carve our totem poles uh, like my uh, my wife's cousin, Bacon Jackson. That's true. Uh, we we also have we also our carver also help us help build our longhouses, and we have uh, gatherers who gather the berries for us and, and keep those uh, for us in the winter time, and trappers and hunters who are able to trade with inland tribes, and uh, we are known for having the most uh, Atu most songs and stories because we're 
be in the governor's mansion. We've been there for a long time. Uh, we have a lot of healers who are able to <coughs> trade, uh, you know, trade their uh, <coughs> healing methods with the inland tribes. And we have extensive contacts with the inland Plunkett tribes and multicultural and speak multi-dialects. <laughs> Tran translators, very valuable. Okay, and now we'll come over to the eagle side. storytelling. We're also known for the new technology that we possess. We have new technology. We're able to keep our stories within books, within the internet and computers. We also have a very quiet space that we can use to be in touch with the land and all of our surroundings. We have very spiritual people that live among us because they spend many days alone in quietness and they're able to gather all their thoughts to share. We're also a, a house that shares everything that we have. So we are a community-based house and we welcome all those that travel up and down the rivers to be a part of our house. Um, we are also the keepers of a clue for our region. Mm -hmm. And we keep all of those things that come in, all those precious stories, those songs, and all of the relationships that we have with that regalia. And in addition to that, we are also weavers. That's who we are. We weave knowledge and stories and songs into our regalia. <coughs> <laughs> and, and if I also might add, you could be a house known for the beautiful, elegant ladies that come from the house. Oh, <laughs> if I may say. <laughs> okay. Now we'll come over to your two. Yes. I think it's cheese. She waits to cut your heart. Ha hit the aya centennial hit the. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming to our clan house in Tenyo. This is and this exercise. <laughs> this is our house. When there's a big kuik here in town, this is where it happens. So we are happy to open the doors of our grandparents' house for those who come, especially our clan opposites. We have four Clinket speakers in our clan. That's probably our most precious resource. We have two gigantic Tanas. We're adding more every day. We have a sane boat. We have a deck hand and fishermen. We, uh, we take all these fish and we trade them with our, with our neighbors who are weavers and who are artists. And we collect vendor boxes full of seal oil and hooligan grease. And we prepare for the kuiks of winter. We have a weaver <coughs> among us. We claim Zanpi Kehini, the stream that flows beside our house. And we fish from there and we gather on the beaches and we claim Takasa, what else do we have? <laughs> we have many clan hats. We forget some things. At <laughs> what about warriors? Do you have? Do you are known for your warriors? We have uh, we have people who can venture all over, who can hunt and hunt many different things. Trade those as well. We there's another room over here which is floor to the ceiling with hides of various kinds that we can trade for different things. Our neighbors up to the north, 
Canuck Duck. We've been looking for her as well, so we can have even more. <laughs> and we have two teachers among us. We have several children who speak our language. And we are happy you're here. Cheesh. Girls, cheesh. Girls, cheesh. Okay, and now we'll, we'll hear from the Eagle side, the house back here. So you could be known for your amazing, everyone wants to see this house dance. You have the best songs and the best dances. And then, you know, traditionally, of course, the houses had, each house had their own dance group. And they owned that repertoire. And it, historically, if another clan or house performed another house group song, it was act without permission, it was punishable by death. So, yeah, so, so things like song and dance, good singers, those were highly esteemed and very valued, so. Good old cheese. Now we'll come back, back here to our Yale's Raven side. Okay, sorry. The state capital will hit our house is an old house, a powerful house where the break or make the mighty wind bigger than the Taku wind. Powerful speakers, powerful throughout the state. We have lots of trade and commerce that's regulated to our house. We have the ability to pass the laws that some people follow. Strong leadership, lots of knowledge, in the, the seat of governance. So that's our house. And, uh, and politically, such a powerful house that their house has influence across the entire state of Alaska. So that indeed is a very powerful house. Okay, so so uh, traditionally, of course, the houses were known for many different things. They were known for things that you all mentioned, resources, food resources, having big, beautiful houses, being the best composers and the best dancers, uh, the best weavers, the best carvers. And so keep in mind with the reciprocity system as well that intermar politically, political marriages were, were basically, that's mo how most marriage, marriages really took place. So we're going to do a politically arranged marriage. So I don't know if I have any proposals, but I might suggest something. Because I see the house over here of the very beautiful, esteemed, elegant ladies. <laughs> house of great knowledge, weavers. They're, they're very spiritual, right? They knew a lot about medicine. Um, they're a little bit away from the village and maybe slightly vulnerable. So perhaps they need to ally with a house on this side that, for example, this house. Very powerful house. Um, they're uh, the Centennial House. Uh, they're known for some of their young, strong warriors that can venture far outside of their own territory for hunting, so they gotta be very brave. In which case, if you did have this, it would, it would seal, you would have to protect their house, right? 
So, but should we do a politically arranged marriage between these two mm -hmm. great houses? Okay. So, so you have to pick a bride. Now, I will say this: uh, elders, including uh, Shirley Kendall, uh, told me that uh, boys could say no, young men could say no, <laughs> young girls could not say no to the politically arranged <laughs> marriage. Yeah. So, yeah. Well. <laughs> okay. It was. Uh, it wasn't. I think it was really decisions between the the leaders of the different houses. And again, these oftentimes were across villages, right? So it wasn't always with, unless it was a very large village. And then remember, traditionally, a lot of the villages had several villages. So like Cake had several villages, right? So now everything's kind of coalesced into to one area. But historically, there were several. But it was very common to have, like for example, my father, uh, Clara Johnson was my grandmother. She's from the coast. She married my grandfather in Atlin to secure the trade route from the coast to the Taku River, up the Taku River to Atlin. So it secured their safe passage. Um, and I will say that, you know, I, this summer I, you know, I, w I was in Juneau and then I went to the Teslin Dance Festival, had so much fun, and I visited Atlin. Then I came back to Juneau, and I, I didn't even think about it, but when I went to Atlin, it was the end of July. They already had snow, like in the mountains. It was really cold, very beautiful. I love Atlin, Atlin very much. But then I thought, what about a coastal bride? You know, she's married to secure the trade route, and she ends in a, in a very different region than the coast. So because the women, once they're married, they have to move to the house of their, of their husbands, right? So do we have a bride over here? Who's the lovely bride? Oh, wow. well, I have oh so beautiful. And you're so lucky. You have this, and here's our young warrior. <laughs> Politically arranged, aren't they beautiful? Okay, so welcome. <laughs> and she. <laughs> oh, yay. Yeah, but he didn't say no because she's beautiful and lovely. He's very happy. He's, he, he feels like, I lucked out. He's like, I lucked out on this one. Okay, but you have to come. No, you're, you've moved. You've moved. You've moved, right? Okay. And so, um, and so uh, oftentimes, sometimes sisters were married into houses. And I thought, I, I, I kind of, when I was doing this exercise, I figured out why. Because if they were moving really far away, you could be with your sister. So like, let's say that, you know, that this house was like in Atlin and, you know, you're from, you know, the southern area, like maybe Sitka. And that's a huge change. You might get lonely. But if there was another eligible brother that your sister could marry, and then you wouldn't be so lonely. And so also keep in mind that there was a lot of honorific protocols and titles. And so what you would call your... Um, your clan uncles or your clan brothers is a different title than what you would call her relatives, right? And so, you know, we live in a very, you know, American society is a very casual society. Um, we don't use honorific titles. We don't have a lot of protocols, but you would follow those very specifically. So there are special things that you would call your, uh, your clan sisters, your clan opposites. Uh, and depending on wh how the houses were intermarried. Okay, so now they're going to have children, right? And so now, uh, let's say that you have twins. Oh my gosh, how bounteous. You're going to have a boy and you're going to have a girl. And so we all know that when uh, there were certain coming of age uh, rites that traditionally the Tlingits practiced. So for example, my dad's father, my grandfather, actually when he came of age had a a raven tattooed on his chest, and there was a big coup week for that, celebrating that he's now a young man. Uh, he can hunt, he can uh, really start engaging in the activities that, that the men do in that society. Young ladies upon their first menses, of course, we all know they were isolated. Um, they could, depending on their status, they could be isolated for up to a year. And they, their only company could be the mother and the mother's sisters. Right, so just that because the, your children are your moiety and your clan in your house. So, but when the children come of age, your young son, he's 13, 14, he's now a young man and he moves back to your original house and he's basically tutored by your brothers. 
you know, the, the, the clan uncles, right? Your daughters stay with you until they have a politically arranged marriage and then they move again to the house of their future husband. So you can kind of start seeing this, how the checks and the balances and the idea of reciprocity were so important. And in fact, if, you know, we all know that Tlingits were a warrior society, there was lots of conflict and lots of battle, but keep in mind that most of the wars were always either eagle on eagle or raven on raven. And in fact, if there were actually a war between the eagles and the ravens, there was another wo a word for it. It was much more serious because it completely started messing with that reciprocity system. So to give an example of how there could be a struggle, so we look at the, the, the governor's mansion, right? So this is an esteemed house, it's a wealthy house. Uh, but all of a sudden, you know, the, the, the state capital people are like trying to, you know, make, you know, them, you know, you might have some struggles with them. Again, most of these were uh, usually across villages and things like that, so. Okay. Yes. I hate, to, I hate to think that I might be asking stupid questions, but that's exactly why I came in here to learn this kind of stuff. Um, are you saying that there used to be conflicts between the Klingon, inside the Klingon nation? Oh, yes. And they used to be very hostile? Oh, yes. Lots. Yes, lots. And in fact, there's, um, I wish I could uh, recall the specifics of it, but there was a hundred year war. Some of you know the history. Who, who was the hundred year war between? It's a coastal group, I think, around the, it was, it was a long struggle. I think De, De Laguna wrote about it. Some of the anthropologists wrote about it. And in fact, when other Tlingits were going through the territory, because they knew that there was a, a, a war going on, um, they would actually uh, m make up that they were from a completely different place and a different clan just so they could avoid any hostility. You know, like, oh no, I'm not from here. I'm just passing through. So yes, it's, it's very true. But it was almost always raven on raven and eagle on eagle. Very. Uh, it was it was it was Tlingit. It was coastal. Yeah, I think De Laguna wrote about it. Yes. What, like, like what about groups that were say exiled out of the area? Who, who did that? Or have that, did that ever happen? Exile. Well, I think exiling would only happen in extreme cases of which you had somebody that just didn't fit in the society. But I think for the most part, the the the, the ideas of 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 like punishment. Um, I think for the most part, I, you know, I think people were actually killed. If they did serious transgressions. Now this, we get into crime and punishment, and again, you have this reciprocity. So let's say, okay, and this did happen. Let's say that we had this politically arranged marriage between these two, but let's say that she was like, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to be there. I, I, I grew up with somebody that I, I love from another village. He's my soulmate. And they kind of try to run off together. That wars were fought over that. War, like Helen of Troy, right? Same thing. So the idea of that, that, the, that, that, that those protocols were set in place were very enforced by the society. And so people could be, uh, and, if, and if somebody basically were guilty of murder, you know, let's say there's a crime of passion, she ran off with some guy and you killed him. It's like, she's my wife, you can't do that. Okay, so everyone gets together and either your house has to pay the house of whoever you killed, whatever they require. Or you can, somebody else from your house can step forward and say, okay, you can kill me and, and I'll, be, I'll be your proxy. He's too young to die, I'm old, you can kill me instead. Or you pay them a lot of money. So, so there, there, was, there was really set rules about all of these kinds of protocols. Um, but other things, of course, we know happen. Like for example, uh, you know, when somebody uh, you know, unfortunately passes away, and this is the system that's still in place, right? Um, the way that when, and, and, I, and I always bring the example of my, my parents, right? So when my father, who was Duck Luady, passed away very suddenly in 1990 of a heart attack, it was, just, it was just a shock for everybody. So all of my entire extended family came over. Um, door, all the Duck Luadies, all the Deshitans, all of the inland Tlingits came to Anchorage. Uh, the Duckley Wages paid for everything. They paid for the funeral. We had a gather. They, they covered every single cost of that. And then when there was a memorial potlatch for my father, a coup week, again hosted by the Duck Luades, the Ravens or the Deshutans, we were all hosted. Um, so that's another kind of scenario I'd like to kind of put into, the, into this exercise so that, you know, students, whether they're playing it or not, they get an understanding of these complex relationships. So, and any comments or suggestions? I'm, I'm open for any suggestions. It's a work in progress.
any mistakes. I know I make many mistakes, and I apologize for them. That's very correct. Everyone, there was a lot of esteem with the affiliation of your of your house, and again, that's your dance group, right? That's everything. That's you're you're from the cradle to the grave. You know, you wear your your jewelry. You you have your face paint traditionally. Of course, faces were painted every day traditionally with with designs that were owned by your house, not not just designs because they're pretty. They have very specific meanings. So. Oh, and, and I, I want to say one more thing because I, I remember my parents telling me sometimes that, for example, there'd be a really elderly lady that would be married to this young man, and I could never figure out why, and then I found out why. It would be because, so the elderly lady, her husband has passed away, and when her husband passes away, she loses the right to live in that house. And so that she would have to marry another young man from the house. It was not a romantic marriage. It was just a, a marriage that secured her political stature within that house because she's lived there her whole life. So that, I mean, that's another kind of mystery that was kind of solved as I begin to ask questions and stuff. May I ask one more question? Yes. If uh, anyone at all, especially our elders, can answer this, it's um, when we lose someone, there wasn't a crucifix or priest back in the day, right? To take care of things. Nowadays, you see the crucifix present. Jesus, priests, and they take care of the ones who pass. Long time I've been wanting to learn how they used to take care of the ones who pass. Because I know that priest wasn't always present. They had their own way of taking care of the ones who pass. Traditional way of thing get with something that wasn't led by a cross, and, I know, and that's a touchy subject for some people. But it wasn't always led by the cross. If anyone knows anything that they heard of on how they took care of it, it was, I'd like to hear that. That's a cleanse. Yeah. Cleanse. Cleanse. And y usually, when somebody uh, would pass away from a house group. Um, they would, that person would lie in state within the house. Yeah. All the members would paint their faces black. All the atu, this is so beautiful, all the atu would be surrounding that person lying in state. And all of the other houses, even the opposites, they would come and put their atu behind it as a show of honor. And then they'd go up and they'd say, we're, sta we're standing with you, we're with you. Through the, it's so, so beautiful. And then always, uh, uh, unless you were a shaman, um, you were uh, uh, basically cremated, you know, in a, in, a, in a funeral pyre. Which, by the way, that's how I want to go, okay? I, I want to be, be, be in a traditional outdoor funeral pyre. And I'd like to see that brought back for those of us that wish it. So, but shamans, of course, were mummified. And they didn't live in the houses. They lived away from the houses. They did not live in the houses. So. Commonly on islands. Yeah, areas. remote areas. Yes. When, <clears throat> when some of the, when 50% of the Tlingits died uh, from disease, did some of the other clan houses claim the crests and, and, uh, and blankets? No, and I, th I think that, that would just be so forbidden. And I, I think it would just, it goes against uh, the grain. But that's when I think a lot of anthropologists, they were collecting, right? This is when we see all of these collections all over the world, right? This beautiful Tlingit artwork. And people often wonder, how did it get there? I think in many cases there was no one that really owned it anymore because that house was gone. Or s there were so few members, uh, maybe they, they would actually move back to another village where they had close relationships. So, and then of course the, um, during the American period and especially with the arrival of Christian missionaries, they didn't want people living in the clan houses. You had to live, 
you know, like in a nuclear family model, like, you know, like regular Americans. And so you start seeing people not living in the clan houses anymore. I know there's some clans who claim they have taken, they, they, have, they have gotten the crest from, from another clan for some reason or whatever. Like yeah. Uh, yeah, like for example, um, like the, the Deshitan, which I'm Deshitan, and actually Deshitan, it's beaver, that's our crest, um, and it's our origins are actually in Angoon, and the split-tailed beaver, and that, that house got so big, it created another house, and they built it literally at the end of the road, so Deshitan is like, house at the end of the road. <laughs> uh, but we, we, we have, we can use the crest of Deshitan, because that was our original house. Uh, and in some cases, I think, um, you know, there, there was definitely protocols with, uh, you know, Atu was always made by the opposites anyway, uh, commissioned. It was always usually, uh, you know, made like if, if the Ravens needed something, they would commission somebody on the opposite side usually to, to commission it. So there was balance in that as, as, as well. So.